first. It was a nightmare. Oh, it was a nightmare. Welcome back to another video. I'm the model artist and thanks for tuning in. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of my recent paintings and we're going to go through the process of how this came to be. <laughs> So today we're gonna go over the process of this painting, my Solange inspired painting, I guess. I don't know if you wanna call it a, I wouldn't call it a portrait, but here it is. So some of the videos that I wanna do on this channel is just kinda of talking to you guys about the process and how I went from sketch phase, well really how I got from like idea to canvas. Um, and I think the journey of a work of art, it's, it's exciting afterwards looking back on it. And it's like really cool looking back on it because sometimes as artists, like what we envision, um, when it's actually finished is completely different. Um, uh, or sometimes it's very close to what we want, but, uh, it's not always easy to transfer it from up here to on here. So today we're going to talk about the process. Uh, everything I thought about, how I got through it, and there's video clips, there's images, so you're not just going to be hearing me talk, you're actually going to be seeing some of the process as we speak to today. So if you're interested and you're wanting to know how I got it from here to here, just stay tuned. Before doing any painting, I always do a couple of sketches. And with this painting, I knew that I actually didn't want to... Um, I did look at some different photos of Solange, but with this specific album that dropped from her, I wanted to use her, you know, that photo, that photo of her with that kind of quarter view and her hair and with the little, um, barrettes things in there. I wanted to use that image. I didn't want to, you know, go too far off and do some kind of, um, you know, look through a different photo and, and, and mess with that because the face of on that album cover her face is so iconic and I knew that that a lot of people would recognize the painting even if it was stylized and I was doing sketches of course once I come up with the sketch I then go on to go in on Photoshop and I do um, you know color comps and I don't know where this idea came from I just knew if I was going to have her face um, I want to do something special with the background and I went for this kind of um, geometric almost uh, I don't want to call it checkered board but I in my head I saw it as broken window pieces um, to a galaxy so I had a I played around with different colors and I didn't want it to be something that was I didn't want too much crazy colors I wanted a very simple color palette because um, I wanted her to shine in this so I did sort of like a peachy Lord checkered um, boards in the back, but then I also um, the window part, the ones that are kind of broken through. I did a galaxy, and I want this really pretty night sky sort of look. And after I get through the color comp phase, of course, it's on to doing the actual painting. And sometimes this can be a little annoying or frustrating, especially if you're drawing something and you already have like a mini sketch that you're in love with, you kind of have to break away from that because if you're going to do it on a larger scale, um, which can be daunting, I think a lot of artists kind of go through this where they want to do a large painting but it's daunting because they have a small sketch that they really enjoy and they don't know if they can transfer that over onto a larger surface. And that's one thing I have to definitely go through and definitely I have to look at. Uh, but I figured the more I practice and the more I, um, you know, get used to upscaling and there's a lot of different ways you can have a projector screen and you can project your image onto your surface. You could obviously redraw it, which is what I did. I, I redrew the image. There's all different ways of doing it. Um, but with me, what I did was I actually redrew the image and once I had it redrawn on a uh, I actually use packing paper. I'm trying to save money, y'all. <laughs> I have a bunch of packing paper from moving and stuff, and so um, I have it all stored in a bin. So, I mean, that's good, like having light paper where um, I can draw on, and that's what I typically do. I don't draw on the actual canvas itself. I draw on a separate paper, 
um, typically something that's kind of like newspaper feel um, and I draw on that and then what I do then is I put charcoal on the back of the paper and I transfer that over onto my canvas and so I lay the paper out and then once I lay the paper out I'll trace the image using a, a hard pencil or a pen Typically I use a colored pencil, it's just easy for me to see the lines and where I'm going. And so that's what I ended up doing. And once that was transferred over, then it was about making those grid lines. So I got a ruler and I went to work making sure. And the thing is, on my original color, color comp, the squares were bigger. Because originally this image was going to go on a smaller canvas where I was going to do, you know, bigger squares. But then I had a change of mind and I decided to do it on a bigger square, a bigger canvas. And so I decided then that, you know, I kind of went that route and I just went smaller squares, which obviously meant me more work, but we'll get into that. But yes, yeah, so then I, I drew on all the squares and then it was time to get into painting. The first thing that I did was the background and sometimes I think as artists we really tend to do the thing that we want to do the most and for me probably that would have been the face obviously doing the face doing salons yourself was probably what I was looking forward to doing the most so sometimes I think as artists when we save the thing we want to do least for last it almost makes us unmotivated to finish sometimes so I say whatever you want to do the least kind of start with that first but also it's just really good practice to do the background of whatever you're doing first anyways the process of this grid though was so long. Oh my gosh, it's so long. It took forever to do. <laughs> Literally took me so long and sadly I had to go on a trip at the same time. So like I was gone for a week, so you know, I had to come back and finish it. But the grid took me so long, but I think it was well worth it. So how I started off was of course first mixing my colors and I got the peach color that I wanted down and then I did the blue squares, you know. And uh, that took me a long time, like I had to go, I couldn't just do every square at the same time because I had to block each square off with tape so it was very straight. I didn't just go in, like even though the squares were drawn, I didn't like just go in and paint each square, I taped it all off. So I would paint a couple of squares, let it dry, which thankfully with acrylic doesn't take that long to dry, and plus you can use a no, I was about to say a blowtorch. Don't use a blowtorch. Use a, a, what's it called? What's it called? Oh my gosh. We girls, we use them all the time. What's it called when you're drying your hair? Blow, hair, hair dryer. Gosh, oh my goodness. Use the hair dryer, the hair dryer to make it go quicker if you so desire. But painted blue squares, painted, you know, uh, the peach squares, taped it off. You know, let it dry, then took off the tape, and I had to re-tape it to paint the other squares. I had to do that probably four times just to get the flat base down because you have to turn it different ways and the squares are in different places. Um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I had to like I had to be very strategic in how I was doing that. And I wanted these really quick a long time too, also because like you have to do each square about three times for each coat to make it really opaque, which just means that um, it's not translucent, you don't see the canvas or anything you want it to be, especially if you want it to really show and be very vibrant. After doing that process, then I had to do the lines. <laughs> and, oh man, again, I got my tape. I had to make sure the paint was thick so that it would, um, you wouldn't see the lines in these, especially with the blue squares, it was really, you could see the, lot, the, the square. So I had to make sure I really coated that in there. But then, <sighs> And this, and I need to figure out a way how to make this work because this took a lot of time. But once I took off all the tape, the squares were actually, the lines were a little bit messy. They were a little bit jagged. Like some of the paint got underneath the tape. And so they weren't clean. And I'll be honest, in that moment, I was like, how, how much can I really see this? Like, is it that big of a problem? Like, if I'm really far back, I really can't see it. But <laughs> that's the artist wanting to be lazy after they're tired. And so what I did, y'all, was I took my time, got a little, got my little paintbrush, and I cleaned up each square one by one to make sure it was not jagged. And y'all, that took a long time. And 
in the moment at the beginning you don't want to do it but I'm really glad because I really do like clean lines in my work and I want it to look just as good from far away as it does up close you know so it took a lot of time but it needed to be done and I'm glad I did because I think the results were definitely worth it next thing to do was I went ahead and I finished the galaxies and I, I was almost tempted to just go ahead and get into the face but I decided no I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up the complete background with the exception of my little details um, and I went ahead and I just kind of I played first I did a little color comp on the side because the last thing I want to do is after spending hours on these squares was mess up my my background so I, I did a little color comp on the side with the paint to see how I want the galaxies to look I didn't want, even though galaxies are beautiful with like a various of colors, I didn't want so much color. I still wanted to keep it very cool because I like the contrast of kind of the peachy orange with the dark blue purple. I wanted that just the position of the cool and the, and the warm. And so I kept that, the colors very limited to blues and purples. And so that's what it ended up doing. And after that, of course, I went ahead with the stars. And what I did was I added a little pink. Um, in the back so like the stars look further away and then I added a very light light pink um, for more stars at the end and so to kind of give it that distance and kind of play with perspective that's what I ended up doing we are going to talk about the face and y'all I had so much trouble with the face like at first it was a nightmare oh, it was a nightmare so the face y'all you know, I was very happy with the background. I knew this was going to go well and I was excited because now I get to do the face. And I was super excited about that. So, let me tell you, I think another thing that artists struggle with is the ugly face in a painting, right? You know, you look at it and you're almost like, not discouraged, but you're like, we're back at the ugly face again. And, and artists, I think, know what I'm talking about. It's like you're working through a painting and it's not, it's a process that needs to happen, but it doesn't look that good. And that's, I think that's why a lot of artists don't like when people look at them draw or create because the artist knows it's not going to look good for a little bit, like for a while, because they have to go through layering values and figuring things out. And that's another thing about art, honestly, I just want to touch on real quick. Art is really much about as much creativity as also is also just as much about problem solving. As you're creating, sometimes you have to make different decisions along the way than maybe you previously thought you were going to do. So like with this painting, I was initially going to do it in a way that was geometric to some of my other paintings. I like geometric shapes, I like very clean lines, flat graphic look. I like that when it comes to my painting. And I was trying to initially in my sketch in my, and you can kind of see in my color comp, it had that kind of flat graphic look. I wasn't going to... Um, make it, I wasn't going to paint it, I would say, or, you know, you know, do a painterly paint sort of thing, which I actually didn't do. I still got to do what I want and I'll get to that. But, um, as I was painting, I, I kind of thought, you know, my geographic kind of flat graphic look, that may not work on this, you know, especially because I want to keep the softness of her face. And plus, I'm doing a person. I want people to recognize it. Though, of course, they'll recognize her hair and stuff. It's just like there was something about where I knew I couldn't do it the way that I like to do it sometimes. Um, not to say I don't like this. I think it came out better than I thought. And I think that just shows how I'm growing as an artist. But anyways, um, so I had to kind of rethink how am I going to do this face. So anyway, as I'm painting, I'm layering down colors. I'm trying to figure out the eyes. I went through a phase actually where I was doing the phase and I'm like, I don't like it at all. And I was really nervous because I spent so much time on this background and I was like, I don't want this face to be ugly. Like that would suck, you know? Especially as a celebrity, you don't want the face to suck, you know? Um, you don't want people to look at your art and be like, oh, yeah, I kind of kind of see that. I still wanted to keep sort of my style, obviously. The eyes are very important. The eyes and lips, always do big lips, always do big eyes. Um, uh, what I decided to do and what I kind of came to understand is that uh, when you're doing a, a stylized portrait or whatever you're doing, um, there are some things that you take that are important, like obviously the hair and her being like natural face, that is that is what stands on the image. You don't want to just all of a sudden give her a total beat and then put her hair like straight. Um, but then there are other things artistically 
that you have to kind of just have artistic license with and freedom with and do so it can fit your work and so um I decided I can't do every color value change in her face because that would require me to do a lot of mixing and painting and I don't do that I don't uh, my style I try not to mix paint I like to just layer a color on I don't mix I don't ever mix colors I mean I mix colors to make a color but I don't like you know blends anything what I do is I make if I make one color here I make another color in a very lighter way and I layer that and then I make another color in a really lighter way and I lay that I lay it on but I don't mix paint I just lay a different color on and so that's kind of what I learned is that I was just you know and I did them in round because her face is round and soft and I wanted to keep that and so I didn't you know and that's what I guess I was worried about I know how to mix paint and stuff but I really want to see if I can really push this style and how I can keep you know to um, be genuine to what I like to do as an artist um, and you that's the problem solving it's like how do I do what I like to do and do it in a way um, that makes sense for this painting and so again like I said I would just do a lighter value and a lighter value and I never mix paint even though these eyes look like they're blended they're not if you looked really closely you would see that I just layer different colors on each other they're not blended it's not like I blended paint together had to you know before it dries which with acrylic is kind of hard because it dries so quickly I just layered paint on layered layer layer so if it looks blended it's because there was another you know color I put on top that's very close to it started coming together and I you know I was like you know what? I can't do every value that's in her face I gotta do what's the most um, prominent what I see the most and what I want to see the most and so I made sure these eyes I knew they were a little darker here and so I played with that I couldn't get every shadow in couldn't get every highlight in but I did what I said what I felt was most prominent um, on her and I still kind of went you know I still had my little geometric play with the lips it looks blended probably from far away but it's not I promise you every color is layered on I don't mix I don't blend um, and for me it's a way that I even work faster in that way which is why I think I love it so much anyway I love doing the eyes It's my favorite part even though you don't see like her lashes very prominently it's that it's that artistic freedom that I kind of took on myself I'm like you know what but what's kind of staple to me and my paintings are the eyes and the eyelashes and I just I didn't give her like a um also like a big old cat eye um, which is kind of like staple to me which I like to put in a lot of my paintings I went ahead and I just gave her some flat some flashes some lashes um, and you know then the face was done with the hair with her hair I again came into another crossroad because my sketch I was gonna do lines throughout her hair it was gonna look very graphic but because it changed so much with the face I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that though it could look cool the juxtaposition between a graphic and sort of like a more painterly style could look really cool but what I decided to do was I loved her face I loved how her face came out very soft very pretty and even in her album cover the album art um, I thought her face even though Probably many of us will, will point at the hair and everything and how it looked with the barrettes and everything like that. But her face is what really stands out to me uh, amongst her dark hair. So I was like, you know what, I don't want to change that. I'm going to go ahead and not put a bunch of detail in her hair. And um, not, I'm not going to make it painterly like her hair, like her face. I'm not going to do the lines. I'm actually going to leave it as a silhouette. And what I will do is I will put in the barrettes. Those will be done. And then I decided to highlight the hair with this purple line around it to kind of highlight her shape and it also helps her stand out from the background and I initially also have the line underneath her chin but it kind of looked weird um, so I just took that off and I just continued the line up to her hairline and that's what I did and I love how it stands out amongst the background it's really pretty and I will probably end up doing this technique in other paintings and I, I really like it at the end is details and um, I went ahead and you'll see this of course in other paintings and you know depending on when this is shown you may have already seen it in another um, painting that I've done I love adding three-dimensional pieces um, to a painting I think that's one of the things that um, it's just genuine to me 
and I love working with hands. I'm like, I when I was in college, I took a 3D class, and I loved being hands-on with stuff, and I still do. And so I apply that to my work. And so I added these little gems to the night sky. And I love it. I think it's so pretty. I think it's really cute. And I love doing fish and touches. And details like this, adding gems, I love. And it looks so good. Like it sparkles. It's like sparkling against my wall right now. But I think that is so pretty. And so like whoever ends up getting this, um, when I actually do sell it, put it where our window is. Like it looks so pretty because the lights are bouncing off the wall. It's really nice. And of course I wanted the gems in her eyes as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, the gems is like one of my favorite parts because again, it's just, it just gives that extra special touch. And I can't wait as like girls in the arms. I'm gonna do even more than gems. Like, you know, I wanna do one where it's like, well, I will tell you, I'll just let you see it. But just thank you for watching. And you know, go ahead, subscribe, keep up to date with like more um, amazing content that I will create for you guys and just showing you guys what I love to do. You know, give it a like, share, subscribe, keep up to date with me, and I will see you in the next video.